was Prince Harry perhaps part of P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, whatever he is calling himself now, Brother Love, apparently as well. Was Harry involved in some of the sex trafficking allegations that have been laid out by a former employee of Sean Puff Daddy Combs? This is very, very interesting. It is a court case going around in civil court. There are a lot of allegations in the lawsuit. But ironically, one of the few celebrities actually named in it is Prince Harry. And you got to wonder... Why? It's sort of in a name drop section. So there's nothing alleged that Harry was actually involved with. But it seems like P. Diddy utilized Harry's name to perhaps entice people into his world. And the question is, why was Harry involved with him in some way? Obviously, they met in 2007 at the Princess Diana concert. Prince William was there as well. And so what is the connection and Are there any concerns that Harry should worry about? Obviously, he has not responded to the lawsuit in any sort of way or form. And again, he is not alleged to have been involved in any of this. But I think it does raise some really critical questions Harry should consider. Because Meghan Markle has dragged him into Hollywood. And unlike the pristine walls of the palace... Hollywood is a pretty grimy, gross place in many, many ways. And Prince Harry might have been dragged into something that he really didn't know about, or he just got sucked into the very vapid vein world of Hollywood and is now starting to pay a bit of the price. So we are going to go into this today, but if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, my name is Brittany. I provide y'all compelling royal commentary about the latest news and sometimes the drama going on behind the scenes. So if you guys want to hit that subscribe button, that would be fantastic. A couple of weeks ago, I launched a Christmas market trip with some of my followers. So if you guys are interested in spending a little bit of time in Europe right before Christmas, you will be back by Christmas Eve. I do have a link for that down below. It'll be in the Germany and the Czech Republic. So if you want to hang out at some of the Christmas market stalls and you want to get some really authentic food and just have a really, really great time right before the holidays, you can check that out. I also have an upcoming trip to Scotland this summer and I have a sponsorship with Anna Lucia Diamonds. So if you like any of my jewelry, I will link it down below. Okay, guys. So getting into this case, when the news first broke, my initial plan was to mostly ignore it because it just seemed clear that when it comes to Prince Harry and his involvement in this case, it's really non-existent as far as we can tell, because this guy is alleging a lot of impropriety by Sean Puff Daddy Combs within their relationship. He is a producer and every and he was working on an album for Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, whatever he calls himself now. He's had a lot of iterations of names. So so this guy was a producer for him for a particular album. And then after the album was done, apparently he was not compensated what he thought was the appropriate payment. And during his time with Sean Puff Daddy Combs, he was involved in a lot of what he alleges was illegal activity with sex trafficking and drug dealing and a whole bunch and violence, a whole bunch of other things. So it raises a lot of really, really interesting questions, especially because Harry is literally the only, like there's a couple names, entertainers, celebrities, foreign dignitaries, like British Prince Harry. That was sort of how his name was put in there. So obviously the two of them do have some sort of connection. Why else mention the name. Obviously, this producer knew that Sean Combs would name drop Harry at certain sections or something because that's how it went on. So we will go into the particulars of this lawsuit because it, it's it's all part of a culmination of an idea as we go through this, which is that, yes, there are, of course, seedy underbellies within the aristocracy in the UK and Europe, but it's a really pretty different than what goes on in Hollywood. We've obviously seen the secrets of playboy that came out a couple years ago. We also have the Nickelodeon special about things going on behind the scenes of various shows and in particular sexual harassment and different sorts of things. And it leads up to some very, very serious things as well. And so we know that Hollywood has this very, very seedy, seedy underbelly. It's, It's existed pretty much since the beginning. And the more time I listened to different people and I, I was listening to one time, Oh gosh, Michael Rosenbaum, I think. And he has a podcast and he talks to different celebrities. He is, he was part of a TV show called Smallville himself. And I catch his things every once in a while. They pop up on my YouTube feed. And what's really interesting is if you listen to enough of these celebrity people, you begin to see a a pattern of exploitation. You see a pattern of pushing people past their limits or what they're comfortable with. And you see people who are so desperate to succeed that they are willing to compromise themselves 
themselves to achieve it. Now, I think there's there's situations on both sides of the equation because I think if you are not willing to compromise, hey, the whole system might change. Yet at the same time, too, if your whole future and your whole career are dependent on you doing certain things and you feel immense amount of pressure or they shove this on you last minute to do something and you don't really feel like you have any sort of way out. I can see how that's really, really hard to resist. Now, me personally, I, I'm just one of those people where if I really don't want to do something, I generally tell you I, I'm not going to do something. <laughs> I'm just one of those kind of people, but I know not everybody is. And if you are, if this is your first job in Hollywood, you're like, oh my gosh, if I don't do X, I'll never get called back again. Then that is obviously a very huge risk. But I think it's reflective too of an industry where you don't really get an opportunity oftentimes to say no if you don't want to. And so you get coerced, forced, or just stuck in situations that you really can't get out of. And again, we have the casting couch culture. And what I find most annoying about Hollywood is that most of the time they are aware of this underbelly and they sort of all exist with it. And then when it becomes convenient to call it out, all of a sudden they're all like, oh, hashtag me too. Because what's interesting is that when it comes to the whole Harvey Weinstein situation. I actually first heard about Harvey Weinstein and it's very, very questionable casting couch practices from actually a royal forum of all things because somebody was wondering, oh, I wonder what they had to do. It was with Cressida Bonus, and I'm not saying anything about her activity whatsoever, but somebody was sort of joking or making the inference. I wonder what she had to do to get a movie deal with Harvey Weinstein because you know what happens when you get into a relationship with Harvey Weinstein and, you know, it was like dot, dot, dot. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. And then when the whole hashtag me too thing came out, I'm like, if I heard about it on a Royal Forum way back in the day, you all knew about it. Courtney Love famously made a joke about it. And she's like, well, if Harvey Weinstein asked you up to his hotel room, you know, or asked you for, I can't remember the exact situation. She's like, don't do it was essentially her thing. And so Hollywood is always aware of the seediness. But they act all high and mighty when something is revealed because they all knew what was going on in the first place. And it's just now convenient to call it out and claim victim status because, again, they all participated in it in one way or another or one sort of another, whether consciously, unconsciously, whatever. There is this sort of ugliness within it. And obviously the British Royals, British aristocracy have also been caught up in things. I, I mean, there's obviously Air Miles Andy, and you also had the Jimmy Savile thing. But Jimmy Savile really conned an entire country. It wasn't just the, the British Royals. He conned a prime minister, too. So it was basically everyone he happened to convince that he wasn't doing certain things. And it didn't. I don't think the truth really came out until after he died. And so the truth is... Yes, sometimes people can keep things really hidden, but I feel like in Hollywood, it's sort of just a quiet known that certain people are certain ways. And so because of that, Megan dragging Harry to Hollywood sets him up in many ways for failure because you might get caught up in X, Y, and Z, whether intentionally or unintentionally. And I think here in this particular situation, it's probably entirely unintentionally. And before we go into some of the specifics of the lawsuit, I think it's really important to establish really who Sean Combs, Puff Daddy P. Diddy, all the different names he has, who he is, and really his history of violence. Because this is important to establish here is that this guy just does not have a great track record in many ways. And so I found this really great article from Rolling Stone about it because I just thought this, I was like, okay, so what is he involved in? Was he involved in X? I don't know. So we have here this article from Rolling Stone. Again, I find it super helpful here to sort of look at this. And it says brief history or brief look at, uh, at Diddy's history of controversies and allegations. And this is quite a long list, by the way. All right, guys. So here we go. So we have the CCNY tragedy. So this was the situation where it was a celebrity basketball game and concert. They only had a capacity of 2,730 people. 5,000 people showed up. There was a stampede. Nine people died. 29 people were injured. And he was called out for not having adequate security at the event. So to say to Sean Combs is most known really for being a producer in 
sort of the R&B rap community is what he's really known for. And he became in particular embroiled in the East Coast, West Coast rap wars that happened in the mid 1990s, which culminated in the murder of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls. And so this is the guy, if you are familiar with those stories and just sort of the escalation of violence. And Sean Combs was part of the East Coast side of it. And then you have Suge Knight and a couple others who are part of the West Coast. And Suge Knight, if you don't know, is currently in prison, I think for involuntary or voluntary manslaughter. I can't quite remember now. But he ran over two people with his car when he was ticked. So, yes, it was apparently unintentional. It was apparently unintentional. But a lot of these guys have connections to gangs as well. Not all of them, but some of them, Suge Knight for sure. Sean Combs, it it could be questionable, but I imagine he has sort of some seedy underbellies again, which we'll go through here. So there was a Jake Robles shooting. And so this was when Combs and Death Row Records, you know, Death Road Records doesn't even sound that great. Marion and Suge Knight were once friends, but the animosity that fueled the violent rivalry between Death Row and Bad Boy Records. Bad Boy Records is a Sean Combs company. Started with a Knight's friend and security guards. Jake Robles was killed outside an Atlanta nightclub after an argument with the Bad Boy camp. And so this was in 1995. This is as sort of all of the stuff with... Tupac and Biggie and just the East Coast, West Coast rap wars were really starting to heat up. Tupac died in 96 and then Biggie Smalls died six months later in 97. So this is around again, the time everything's starting to blow up. There was the attack of Steve Stope. Oh, so he went into the office. He did, he did. And apparently attacked this guy with a champagne bottle charged with second degree assault, criminal mischief. Stout claims that his arm and jaw was broken in the attack, but Combs denies any bones were broken. And that he basically went into the office to intimidate this guy. There was a New York club shooting in 1999. This is sort of a famous instance as well, where I believe this was a case where Combs asked J-Lo, who was his girlfriend at the time, to hide his gun or take the gun in for him, something to that effect. And so this guy, Shane, was shot three times in a crowded club, and he was arrested with two nine millimeter guns in his car and charged with four weapons charges and for bribing his driver to claim that the guns were his own. So again... A lot of questionable activities. And obviously we missed, there's a lot of questions over with the murder of Tupac and Biggie, which were both drive-by shootings, which both relatively remain unsolved. There's there's questions of, did P. Diddy have involvement in it? Suge Knight? Because obviously they were sort of the big figureheads of this East Coast, West Coast rap war. So again, this all is background knowledge that probably isn't totally applicable and you're wondering what this has to do with royalty but it's all building up to something because you need to understand sometimes the background for stuff to make a bit more sense here so we have the scuffle with j cole and so there's some accosting going on here so again a lot of p diddy's some of at least you could argue that some of his conflicts how he solves them is with violence. So we have allegedly punches Drake in 2014. And then he fights with a UCLA coach because one of his sons was, I believe on the football team. And the, the guy said, the coach said, Oh, well, I don't care who your daddy is. You're playing for UCLA and you need to do what I tell you to do. And then Sean Combs goes up and tries to intimidate this guy. And Gina Hyun alleges abuse. You have Cassie files civil suit against Combs in 2023. So this is his former girlfriend and her allegation Allegations sort of match up with the allegations made by this most recent guy who probably triggered, although I would imagine authorities were already investigating him, triggered the recent search of Puff Daddy's homes. And so she charges a couple things. And one of her things is he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. You have Jane Doe who sues him. You have Diddy faces you know, another assault charge. You have Jane Doe here. And I'm not using particular words because you could get demonetized for them. So I'm just telling you guys right now. So obviously I'll try to remember to link this article down below if you're interested. We have another lawsuit here. We have, you know, another lawsuit. Hulu scraps family reality show because he's tried to sort of reframe himself. I guess his new nickname now or the name he's given himself is Brother Love and he's changed his middle name to Love. I think a lot of people would probably disagree. And then he has another, he settles another lawsuit and is dealing with this. And then this is the most recent one that sort of set up everything is Sean Combs is sued for assault by Love Album producer. And so this guy is Rodney Little Rod Jones, and he's suing for $30 million. And there's a whole list of charges that he is alleging that Diddy was involved in. And so all this to say, Sean Combs, 
is not probably a great guy. He has some very questionable connections. <laughs> he has a long history of violence. And so, or, or you could say intimidation tactics with violence attached. And you could question a lot of things. So yes, very, very big questions. And so what does this lawsuit state? Because obviously Harry's involvement and in it stems from his mention in this lawsuit. So let's pull it up here. So we definitely won't go through all this lawsuit. Some of it is rather explicit what is explained, but there's a couple of key things to hone in on in this lawsuit. And it's just something that we want to go into because we're wanting to try to make a case for something regarding obviously Harry's attachment with this and his over overall integration into the Hollywood world. Okay, so here is a lawsuit. So Rodney Jones is listed as a plaintiff. And then there's a whole series of people he is charging in addition to that. And so there's pictures of people attached to it, explaining who they are and stuff. And then there's ex explanation of who Rodney is. So we want to start with this summary of events just to establish sort of a ground through. So it's from September 2022 to November 2023. Mr. Jones produced nine songs for Mr. Combs. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Combs' residence in Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs. During his time, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as producer on Love Album. The claims raised in this complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video and audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began to record himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, his guests, engaged in serious Ill illegal activity. Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. He displayed illegal firearms, provided alcohol-laced beverages to minors, and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Florida. His chief of staff instructed her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide them to Mr. Combs. Christian Combs drugging and assaulting women. So this is one of Puff Daddy's sons. Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship to soften the impact of the recent lawsuit that he was experiencing with one of his former girlfriends, young Miami's cousin, and the attack against Mr. Jones. You have Cuba Gooding Jr., who is also alleged to have assaulted Mr. Jones. You have a rapper who was consorting with underage girls, sex workers, and an R&B singer with Mr. Combs in Los Angeles home consorting with underage girls and sexual workers. So again, lots of questionable activities going on. And so this is one of the things that's alleged. And this is very interesting because it is an actual story. So on September 12th, Mr. Combs had a writer and producers camps and he had everybody at this recording studio. And so his son was there and his son's friend named G. G is a 30 year old tall African-American male. And so at some point, the three of them, so Combs, his son and G were all in this heated conversation. They all apparently went into this bathroom and gunshots rang out. And Mr. Jones claims that obviously it was Sean and his son who perpetrated this assault. And then they called the police and told them that this guy was shot outside in a drive by essentially, and that he was to basically lie to the police is sort of what is being alleged here. And I did actually find the same article. And so this is actually an article from KCLA news talking about this particular situation. So again, very serious allegations and obviously serious potential acts of violence. So I will say if you are seeking out this document, there are definitely some, they're not really explicit because they are like blocked, but at the same time, there are pictures included in this to help corroborate some of the stories. And so this is one I find particularly of note is Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs has recordings of defendants, Lucy and Charles Gr Grange, Ethiopia, and I'm not even going to try with the rest of that name, as well as other celebrities, music label executives, politicians, and athletes recorded because apparently he recorded everything. What I've noticed a lot about cults and some of these sort of nefarious dearlings is that they all have a lot of recordings. Hugh Hefner apparently did the same thing. He had recordings everywhere throughout his home. So anytime he could catch anybody doing essentially anything. And since he had a lot of major celebrities coming to his home, he had potentially a lot of blackmail material. So again, this is very, very questionable dealings, 100%. And so Mr. Jones also alleges that he, Mr. Combs was allowed to wreck 
havoc. And so he has possessions of compromising footage of every person who has attended his free golf parties and his house parties. So this is really critical. So if Mr. Combs has compromising footage of every person and if Harry was named, it's potentially possible that Harry has been to one of these parties and potentially allegedly, possibly there could be some compromising things of him that exist. Just saying that's a possibility. And so then another one of the allegations is Rico, which is like racketeering and everything. Enterprise, all the defendants have engaged in activities of which include interstate foreign commerce is comprised of an association, in fact, of persons, including each defendant and other co-named conspirators. And so to acquire drugs, firearms, prostitutes, minors, sex workers, and the labor of producers, musicians, writers, creators, and other artists such as plaintiffs to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation. I think this is sort of key as well because we see this sort of a lot in Hollywood. It's like, oh, work for me for free and then I'll nudge you in a particular direction. I feel like you get that a lot in Hollywood and then people aren't paid or they're, they do something and they're, they're not really compensated well because Hollywood, I find at least the more I watch different documentaries and stuff is, is very much a power play. The less power you have, the more likely people are to take advantage of you. So it behooves you to have, you could say a particular level, but obviously that comes through working your way up the system. So Again, all these things, mail and wire fraud as well. So a lot of these things in this particular situation. And so he also goes and says, upon information and belief, this Rico enterprise, which is comprises like Diddy's whole operation, has existed for at least 20 years, dating back to the 1999 nightclub shooting in NYC when Mr. Combs required his then girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez, to transport his illegal firearm into the NYC club. So we talked about that situation earlier with an artist named Shane and to assume responsibility for shooting of several individuals. Mr. Combs used his power, money, and influence to bribe jurors and witnesses, such as a friend of the shooting victim, Natania Rubin, who reported to law enforcement that she saw Mr. Combs and not Shane pull the trigger and shoot her friend in the face. Natania Rubin later testified at Mr. Combs' criminal trial that she was tying her shoe and may not have seen who shot. She later confessed that Mr. Combs paid her. So again, all this is to establish P. Diddy is a rather questionable guy. He's engaged in some very questionable activities. So it, again, it would behoove Prince Harry in many ways to be very careful about who he associates with. So this is all, again, to establish Mr. Combs' his record, his sort of nefarious involvements, and all of different sorts of things that seem to imply or conclude, you could say, that he's a questionable guy at best, maybe somebody to keep at arm's length, not really a guy you want to engage with. So we go down here to another line says, among other things, defendants knowingly and intentionally recruited, enticed, provided, obtained, advertised, and solicited by various means, Mr. Jones, as well as other class members, knowing that defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Combs Global would use the means of force threats of force, fraud, coercion, and a combination of such means to cause Mr. Jones, as well as others, some of whom were under the age of 17, to engage in commercial sex acts. So this seemed to be sort of something Mr. Combs likes his prostitutes and sex workers, apparently. And so here is where we get to Prince Harry. And this is all part of a kind of a longer bit, which I didn't I sort of stopped reading some of it just because it was is very much the ease. Some of the stories in the beginning are rather interesting in the allegations. And it says, among the financial benefits of the defendants are participating and facilitating Combs's sex trafficking venture were the affiliated and access to Mr. Combs' popularity. Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs' sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British Royal Prince Harry. So again, we don't know if he actually attended any of these parties. Given that he is name dropped, it's entirely possible that he did. Not saying that he didn't. But what I see here and the problem that Harry perhaps did not realize when he married Meghan Markle, because the truth is we all sort of have stars in our eyes when it comes to Hollywood. We think of the sort of the creativity that goes on behind the scenes and that there is this great sort of atmosphere of just camaraderie and working together. And, and there is, but there's also this. 
there's also a lot of this. It almost sounds like really the parties that used to be thrown by the Playboy Mansion, which were so famous for their debauchery, were now being transported over to Shams Combs' side. I honestly don't hear a lot about him. I, I look at the Daily Mail every day. I, I watch Hollywood somewhat closely, not as closely as I used to. I don't really remember hearing much about these parties. But if Sean Combs wants to throw these parties and wants to keep them under the radar so that they can have this sex trafficking venture within them, then I sort of understand why perhaps they weren't reaching the mainstream news all that much. But here is the danger for Harry. When Harry entered Hollywood, I'm sure he is like most of us in some way because we have heard before and I don't necessarily deny them or say that they shouldn't feel this way. And I think even royals are somewhat sometimes enthralled with celebrities. And I don't think Harry is any different in this situation. In fact, that was probably part of the attraction to Meghan Markle is that she was an actress and a celebrity. That was part of what attracted him to her. But the truth of Hollywood is something a lot closer to what Sean Combs was doing than the idealization that we have. So when Meghan pulled Harry from the, you could say, gilded palaces, gilded walls of the UK and then the British aristocracy system and transplanted him over to Hollywood, he probably didn't know that you really have to be careful who your friends are and who you associate with. Because, yes, you could say, oh, this is the best party ever you don't really know the CD underbelly going on behind the scenes. And this is something Harry just probably wasn't aware of. And yes, he lives in Montecito, so he's sort of out of somewhat the Hollywood bubble. But this is the industry Megan is trying to make their mark in. And it's a nasty industry in a lot of ways. Like you, the more you watch documentaries and various things, like the more it's like, oh my gosh, how do we like lift these people up so much because they're all so messed up and they do things that most of us wouldn't consider because there's so much power and influence in Hollywood. And then when you have power and influence, you can offer that to other people and other people are willing to compromise themselves or beliefs, their, their desires and dreams in order to perhaps achieve their goals. And so they're willing to do anything. And then they find out the real cost and the real cost is much less lovely than what people would initially want. And this again for Harry is the danger here is I don't think he fully, fully understands that associating in Hollywood does have risks that he does not maybe know because Harry was mentioned in this document, not William. Why? Because well, William's obviously in the UK, but William's also not in that world. Harry is now in that world. He is closer to it. And he perhaps was invited to these parties and then would go. We know Prince Harry has done drugs. He talked about taking like psychedelic mushrooms from Courtney Cox's house. And so who knows what he was attached to, what parties he went to, and those sorts of things within that industry. He allowed himself to be pulled potentially in that direction. And unfortunately, that does have a cost. And though he might not be involved in anything that's going on, now people are looking at him more closely. Now he's pulled into this very, very ugly lawsuit because essentially of Meghan Markle telling him that Hollywood is the greatest thing ever. We're going to achieve so much, Harry, as long as you go to Hollywood with me. This is going to be wonderful. And it really hasn't been in a lot of ways. They've struggled a lot within the entertainment industry. And this is not going to be any better for them. And this makes him look pretty bad as well. And that he was the only celebrity mentioned. I think he was the only celebrity mentioned, guys, because I know some people read too much into these things. He was the only one mentioned because he's the only foreign dignitary that Puffy knows. And so Jones, when he was writing the lawsuit, well, he's mentioned Harry. Harry has maybe been to his parties. And here's the thing, too. Now Harry potentially knows that if he was at one of those parties. And here's the thing. When Harry was caught doing his escapades in Las Vegas, he was one of the most popular royals. He was about to go and serve a tour of duty. And at the time, he could get away with this good old boy style behavior. He's just one of the lads. He's having fun. He won't get away with that anymore. He's not, he's without the protection of the monarchy, A, and now he's a father B. And so if he has been contributing or part of any of this, it will come back to bite him. And it goes to show again in Hollywood who you associate with matters. Yes, there's some good people there, but there's a lot of nastiness there too. This is not a great industry in a lot of ways. It's also a dying industry. And I think they said recently the most watched 
thing on televisions right now, almost pretty much, or most stream things are, is actually YouTube of all things. And so Hollywood is sort of a dying industry because of the strikes and everything, because of the really abysmal box office of the last couple of years, people are tuning out of Hollywood, myself included. I used to be a big person. Like we used to have like a weekly pass to like the cinema. We would go all the time as a family because there's already great things coming out. I used to love going to the trailers. Now there is no movie I want to see. There's no movie I want to see coming up this year. And Hollywood has just completely lost the plot. And Harry and Meghan walking into this industry, I think blind and a bit arrogantly are really probably perhaps regretting their decision because I think actually what's happened, or at least maybe what you could guesstimate sort of happened is that because Hollywood, I feel like has lost some of its glamour, People are going to Royals because Royals still have the glamour we miss from old Hollywood. I love watching and searching through the old clips of the British Royals going to like the, the movie theater, like literally to go to a movie theater, they would put on their furs and their, their largest diamonds and tiaras, and they would go to the movie theater. And I'm like, I want that so bad anymore because I'm like, oh, I miss that. I so wish actually the British Royals would do that. We got a little bit of that with Catherine and her gorgeous and insane, wonderful and amazing golden gown at the James Bond premiere. But the real glamour and sort of glory you could say right now is in Royals. It's definitely not in celebrities anymore. And more lawsuits like this show that. And I think Prince Harry should think very, 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 very carefully about who he associates with there because yes, it is all glitz and glamour. But there is also a lot of nastiness there, too. And I feel like it breeds it more than in any other industry out there. And it's so based on exploitation of women and children and just so many different things. And people get so broken by the Hollywood system that this is not a good industry. This is not a good place necessarily to be. But Megan told Harry, oh, we'll be wonderfully successful there. Well, it's sort of been more of a train wreck than anything else. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to hit that like and subscribe button and I shall see you guys soon. Bye.